Welcome to MMA Dogs. My name is Hector. This is my dog, Dan. Hi. We are in Las Vegas, the home of the UFC and the mecca of MMA. In our opinion, and we've talked about this uh, before. What do you got, dog? Yeah, we, we both agree on this. Um, they go out there and, and finish a fight early in the first round. But don't get caught speeding. <laughs> don't get caught speeding on this fight. <laughs> They're against a guy who, who just had a, got bit by a dog with rabies or something. For me, it's a do not bet. And uh, betting advice, do not bet. But it's going to be one of those things, guys. I really, I really feel it. It's unanimous. MMA dogs have spoken. Five star. And it's, uh, that's going to be a knockout. Just something to highlight the night. MMADogs.com. MMADawgs.com. Who's ready to make some money? I know we are. If you're ready to consistently profit over and over again, you've come to the right place. Now let's go to my dog, Hector, from America's finest city. Welcome to MMA Dogs. My name is Hector, and I'd like to thank all of our clients and all of our supporters. Um, you know, we we started off on YouTube, and uh, the natural progression, you know, natural uh, evolution, was to move this branches out onto um, our own platform, onto our own website. So I'd like to thank everybody who supported us from from day one. If you're on the fence, if you're thinking about it, if you've been watching our stuff and you think like, oh man, you know, I really enjoyed their work on, on YouTube and I really enjoyed their videos, um, go ahead and give us a shot. You know, um, if we don't profit, if we don't make you money, um, then I will refund you your your money that you paid us and, uh, and then I'll give you the next card for free. So that way it's real nice, real fair. And uh, you know, we're doing this all on our own. So my dog, Dan, he's now behind the scenes He's taking care of the website, taking care of all the orders, taking care of all the uploads and, and the graphics and all that good stuff. And then um, that gives me the opportunity to focus solely on the, the picks, solely on the bets. It allows me to, to watch all the fight footage that I, that I want, that I like to watch, that I, that I need to watch. Um, it allows me to do all the breakdowns, listen to all the interviews. So do all the work that I do. Um, I'll, show you, I'll share with you guys here the... I've got this uh, big book here where I keep, uh, you know, not only all the stuff, all my notes um, there, but also on the computer, on my iPad, on my iPhone. So it's just, a, it's a whole operation and uh, and it's just the two of us. So, uh, you know, we love it. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, we didn't come from a, a, a major uh, website, you know, we didn't come from one of those big websites that's owned by the big companies or or, um, you know, we're not owned by any sports books. We do all, I do all my stuff here. Uh, my dog does all his stuff for, from his home. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's just, it's just really, really, um, encouraging to see the, the amount of clients that we have now, the, uh, all the support that we've had and, uh, yeah, we really appreciate it. So we got UFC fight night 37. Gustafsson versus Manua, and I'm wearing my yellow tie here for a reason. Um, so let's dive right into it. We got nine fights to go over. So let's go over the first fight of the night. We got Gagnon versus Harris. Now with Gagnon, he's had a layoff. He's been out for a while. He's also traveling. So he's traveling from New Jersey, where he, where he has his fight camp, to England. And um, he says that doesn't bother him too much, which is which is uh, refreshing, reassuring to hear. Um, he will have a stand-up advantage, striking advantage for sure for Gagnon. Um, he will have to defend the takedown. Now with Harris, we know we're getting a strong wrestler, but he does abandon his game plan. As we saw with Lineker, he had no business trying to uh, stand and bang with Lineker. And uh, he's got that, that weak chin, you know, five losses by knockout, TKO. Um, he is at home. He is at home. But the last time he fought at home, he got knocked out and he abandoned the game plan. So this is going to be an interesting matchup here. Can Gagnon keep it on the feet? If so, he should win. If Harris can put him up against Cage, take him down, control him, then he should win. So my pick is Gagnon. I do favor him slightly, um, but it's a do not bet, guys. I have a zero interest in betting that particular fight, but Gagnon by decision. Moving on to the second fight of the night, we got Araujo 
Araujo versus Mitchell. Now, Mitchell, he'll be making his debut, and Mitchell has slick submissions. He's got um, excellent jujitsu, very good aggressive submissions. Uh, the twister, I know he's had, um, and uh, but that's that's the thing about him is that if he doesn't get the submission, he he probably won't um, because Araujo is so experienced because he's been in fights, he's been in in decisions. Araujo will. Um, not only has he ha had the more experience, but also the better level of um, opposition. Uh, you know, he has his camp at Greg Jackson's. He has also a black belt in jiu-jitsu. So it's going to be difficult for Mitchell to submit him. And uh, and he will have that that uh, that UFC, the jitters are out of the way. Um, and, and the level of opposition he's fought is better. The level of, of uh, training partners that he has is better. So I'm going to go with Araujo by decision. But also, do not bet. Now, <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So we got Scott versus Da Silva. Now, let's talk about Da Silva first. Making his UFC debut. All right. A year and a five-month layoff. A huge layoff for Da Silva. Last three out of four opponents have been Guys that are over the hill, that are done, that have seen their better days, old old men, you know. Um, his whole career, he's been fighting non-UFC caliber guys, so that's not good. One of these, you know, Brazilians that has, uh, you know, has the guts to go in there in the octagon and fight, but his record um, is impressive on paper. But when you actually watch the fight footage, when you actually fight, watch this guy fight, you're just like, man, what is up with that? So even when he gets a takedown, so even when Da Silva gets a takedown, he still isn't slick on the ground. He may be good in jiu-jitsu competitions, but in MMA, I'm not impressed one bit. Not the slightest bit impressed with, 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 uh, with Da Silva. Now, with Brad Scott, hoo-hoo-wee! This will be his second camp at MMA Lab. His second camp at MMA Lab in Arizona. And his second fight at 185 pounds since he decided to move back up. And uh, let me tell you a little something about this guy. Trains with Ben Henderson, Joe Riggs, and some excellent wrestlers. So his first round, he does a, a, a round robin uh, of, uh, of sorts. So his first round is against this D1 uh, wrestler, I believe, from Iowa. Maybe from, uh, yeah, from Iowa or Ohio State. And um, so his takedowns are, are, you know, the best. Second round against Ben Henderson. We know what a beast he is. And the third round against Joe Riggs. So he's, these are the guys he's training with every single day. And uh, Brad Scott is the type of guy that I like to invest my money in. You know, somebody who, who assesses the situation and says, hey, um, I I'm doing good. I'm progressing. No offense to my current team. But I need to to branch out. I need to to do something new. I need to um, uh, you know work on my wrestling. I need to work on my overall conditioning. I need to work on my MMA game. And MMA Lab is is a great place for Brad Scott. He destroyed Michael Kuyper. Absolutely destroyed him. And he showed us vast improvements in that fight. So what he showed us, the, the fighter that stepped in the octagon against Kuyper, totally different. And I expect Scott to knock out the Silva. In the first or second round, I he's one of my betting picks. I am 100% invested in Brad Scott. And now we move on to the next fight. Another guy that I am investing my money in, and that is Luke Barnett. So we got Barnett against Nielsen. Now, Nielsen is making his UFC debut. Um, he's Swedish, but he trains in Denmark. And... Uh, with him, it's going to be simple. You know, he's going to have to get the takedown. And once he gets that takedown, he's going to have to hold Barnett down. And after holding him down, he's going to have to either ride out a decision, which I don't see happening, or get a submission, which I don't see happening either. Now, with Barnett, he looked unreal versus Andrew Craig. Very dominant performance there. He showed us improvements, really crisp striking. I'm really impressed by his striking. He's going to have the significant reach, reach advantage, the height advantage. He's been working on his takedown uh, defense, as usual, on his overall wrestling game. He's already 2-0 in the UFC. He's very familiar with Nilsson. He's watched him fight in person. 
and he um, trains with guys who have fought him. Uh, one of them being Tor Trang. So Tor Trang actually already beat Nelson in uh, 2012. So, wow. I mean, this is just this is just one of those uh, fights that I just have an excellent read on. Uh, you know, knock on wood. Um, but uh, very confident Luke Barnett here. Uh, one other guy that is a is a big investment for me. And uh, that's who I'm going to go with there, Barnett, uh, by knockout also. Now, moving on to the next fight, we have Latifi. This is uh, an oddball um, uh, matchup. Latifi and Diabate. And uh, Diabate, what do we know about him? Well, he's 40 years old. He's got excellent striking. We know that. But he's very easy to take down. Very easy to take down for him, unfortunately. You know, he gets taken down. He's like a fish out of water. Um, so he's going to have to keep the, uh, Latifi at bay, you know, keep that jab, kick, kick, keep that jab. Uh, and he's, even when he kicks, he's got to be careful because anytime you kick, you get taken down. So mostly with, with, uh, with punches, keep him away, beat him up. If he tries, if Latifi tries to get the takedown, knee him in the face, you know, whatever it takes. With Latifi, dangerous opponent here. He's got a full camp, in shape, big, built like a tank, wrestler. Um, so it's going to be an interesting fight here. You know, we're going to have the wrestler versus a striker and Latifi's got to get the takedown. He's got to get a takedown. And once he gets that takedown, he's got to work towards a submission. Diabate can be submitted. And, uh, I'm going to go with Latifi here. Latifi for the win. Do not bet. This next fight is very interesting. We have Akhmedov versus Nelson. Let's talk about Nelson first. So Nelson is a Henzo Gracie black belt. So very serious matter there. Uh, competitive at uh, Abu Dhabi and also the Pan American Games. So he's very good on the ground. Uh, decorated grappler. Uh, he's also got a black belt in karate. So we know his, his, uh, he's got that, um, that uh, karate swag. And then uh, SBG Ireland team. So uh, Conor McGregor. And uh, that's probably his best training partner over there. Um, he's 11-0 with one controversial draw, which was his first fight of his career. So he's, he's a good guy. Um, and he could make 155 easy, though. Um, he's got a, a bit of a layoff now. It's, uh, you know, it's going to be um, a year, if not already, around the one-year mark. And uh, that's, that's not good, you know, battling some injuries. And he's got a very uh, blasé type of attitude about him, which is cool. You know, hey, to each their own. But uh, when you're a fighter, hey, a fight is a fight. You know, how, how does Anderson Silva says, a uh, fight is a fight. We come to fight. Let's go. You know, and Akhmedov is a badass Russian. I mean, this guy trains at Greg Jackson's Winkle John. And uh, he also went to Tiger Muay Thai to train some. Um, his first weight cut to 170, very successful. He's not too dehydrated, not too uh, strong, drawn out. Um, and his only losses can't come via submission, but it's not going to be an easy task uh, for Nelson who uh, could make 155, fight against a guy who's been fighting at 185, you know, 30 pound difference there. And uh, I'm gonna go for the upset special here with Akhmedov, uh, first round knockout, but also do not bet. We got three more to go, three more to go. Um, this one is a very uh, interesting matchup here because we got uh, Pickett against Siri. Now, Siri making his UFC debut on two weeks' notice. So, yikes. That's going to be a tough one. And he's going up against Brad Pickett. You know, one of the best 135-pound, uh, now 125-pound fighters. Um, so, Pickett is definitely the pick here. Absolutely. Uh, Siri stands a chance on the feet. But once he gets taken down, pff, that's it. Night, night. Pickett will put him to sleep. Um, now, do not bet on Pickett, though. The price tag, minus 800 at some books. That's unbelievable. That, that's too much uh, too much juice there. Um, and the reason why is because if Pickett was going in there and, uh, and he wasn't 35 years old and he wasn't fighting at home and he wasn't known for his performances that he puts on, you know, these, these unbelievable fights, which which are I admire, which I love to watch. He's one of my favorite fighters. Um but that can be dangerous, you know, when you're investing money on a guy. You know, he's not he's not up in line next to fight uh, Demetrius Johnson. Well, that would be an awesome fight. You know, that would be a great fight. 
But to lay minus 800 on a guy who, who perhaps could go out there and want to entertain the crowd and want to say, hey, you know, I'm 35 years old. I've got a few fights left in me. I'm going to just entertain the crowd here. He knows Dana White loves him. Uh, the UFC loves him. The fans love him. So, you know, he could say, I'm going to put on entertain and get caught or something like that happen. No way. Uh -uh. No thanks. But uh, Brad Pickett definitely for the win there. Do not bet. And then we got a, oh man, how does Rampage and, and, and Rashad say um, when they had their fight? Once he's on black on black crime. And uh, we got Michael Johnson. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <sighs> Versus Melvin Guillard. So let's talk about Guillard first. So we know he's got that knockout power. Bam, that knockout power. Check out this crazy stat. So out of all UFC history, Anderson Silva has the most knockdowns, 17 of them. Chuck Liddell has second, 14 of them. Melvin Guillard, not Melvin Manhoof, but Melvin Guillard has 13 of them, the most in UFC lightweight history. On the feet, that's where Guillard wants to keep this fight. Use that knockout power of his and pew, send Johnson into orbit. He's got to defend the takedown. If Johnson defends it, if Johnson attacks with a takedown, he's got to defend it. And uh, let's look at Johnson. Johnson just got, just, it's coming off one of the, probably the biggest win of his career. Either that or the Lozon one. So he knocked out T-Bow, made Lozon look bad. He's working real, real hard with the uh, Black Zillions, world-class athletes over there. Uh, Eddie Alvarez. Um, his coaches. Excellent coaches over there, uh, Henry Hoof, and uh, just just a bunch of good coaches, a bunch of good athletes. He's been unpredictable, though. He's been unpredictable in the past, although it appears it's in the past now. And he's matured. He's coming to his own, and he just keeps getting better and better. He's only 27, you know. Uh, Melvin's 30, but Melvin's had 60 fights, 45. I mean, this guy's had so many fights. Whereas Johnson, you know, he he's he's on the come up here. Uh, he won't have to be he won't have to be uh, be worried about getting taken down in this fight or submitted, you know. And if anything, he can work the takedowns himself. He's a southpaw. He's got the height, the reach, and he's never been knocked out. Now uh, he's second in the lightweight division with eight knockdowns. So second only to to Melvin Guillard. Uh, but of course, Melvin's had many more fights. Um, and he doesn't think that Melvin is a thinker. So, basically, saying Melvin is stupid, you know. Um, Michael Johnson surrounding himself with with with, uh, with good MMA fighters, uh, with good coaches, working on his weaknesses, constant improvement, right? So, so, what I was talking about earlier, the evolution, the improvement, you got to progress, and this guy is doing that. You know, he had a, a bit of a short camp. Um, and in my opinion, he doesn't, doesn't like being hit, you know, he doesn't, of course, nobody likes being hit, but he, he doesn't like being hit. Um, I think back on that Melvin, uh, versus Cerrone firefight and how would have Michael Johnson responded to that fight? You know, I, we saw what, what, uh, what, what, that Melvin has the guts to hang in there and boom, got knocked out. Uh, but in, in the meantime, you know, almost, uh, almost knocked out, um, Cerrone himself. So you know, how is Michael Johnson going to um, react? How is he going to respond to, and what is he going to bring to the table when that happens? And I expect that to happen tomorrow night. So I have to side with uh, with uh, with Johnson here. I have, to, I have to side with Johnson. Johnson for the pick, but um, man, that's going to be one heck of a fight. Do not bet. Um, man, that's a tough one there. That, that is going to be one hell of a fight. Uh, but Johnson for the pick there. And then moving on. <coughs> Wait! So that's why I'm wearing my yellow tie here. Gold tie, gold for the belt. Now we got the people's champ. The people's champs in the house. Alexander Gustafsson. And uh, England's own Jimmy Manoa. So with Manoa, we got power. We got a ton of power. Just brute strength power he's got three wins where he injured his opponent um but he is 34 years old and he's not at Gustafson's level unfortunately for him he is not now fortunately for us Gustafsson is just on another level I mean this guy first of all he's got excellent wrestling I don't think 
anyone really comprehended how good his wrestling was up until we saw him in that John Jones fight. Um, excellent footwork. I mean, his footwork is unbelievable. Excellent striking. And his coach, uh, he surrounded himself around great guys. So his coach, Andreas, at home, he's not going to let him lose. The guys here in San Diego at Alliance, they're not going to let him lose. A lot of times when a guy loses the biggest fight in their career, you know, he lost that fight to Johnny Bones Jones uh, in the judge's eyes. It's very difficult for them to, to work so hard for something, sacrifice so much, and then come up just short. You know, they can almost feel it. They can almost touch the gold, but boom, it's, it's taken from them. It's taken from them, and it's just like, you got to be kidding me. I busted my ass. I, I dieted. I, I slept eight hours every night. I didn't go out. I didn't, uh, you know, I, I, sac- I didn't eat um, during the holidays, and the judges robbed me. Wow. So you can imagine, you know, just like anything else in your life or in my life where, where you work so hard for something and you don't achieve it. Man, guys get depressed after that. But his coaching, his, his whole team, he's around him. And you know what? Hey, you are, you, you are next in line. You will get that shot. And I don't expect Gustafsson to lose a step nor slow down like most guys would after something like that. Not only that, but he's got the people behind him. You know, the, uh, we voted him for the, the EA Sports uh, UFC game cover. And that's huge. I mean, think about the guys he beat out for, for that. And, uh, and, and as, um, as silly as that may seem, that's something that, you know, hey, you know what? People are expecting him to, to, to fight Jones for the title. Because he surrounded himself around so many smart guys, and he himself is a smart guy, he's going to go in there, get the job done. He's going to take Jimmy down, and he's going to submit him. Bow! So, let's take a look here. So, for fight night 37, Gustafson versus Manawa, there are no five stars. There's a close call. There's a couple close calls here. So, we got two four stars, very large investments, Alexander Gustafson and Luke Barnett, both four stars, large and we have a, a medium three star, just about made it to the four star, and Brad Scott. So those are the three horsemen there. Those are the guys that are gonna that are gonna deliver for us. And uh, and we got a little a little surprise here at the end. So MMA dog bets, or as I like to call them, investments, because when I think of an investment, it's something that I have knowledge in, something that I feel comfortable about, something that I have a, um, an insight on, something that I that I understand. Whereas when I think of a bet, you know, I think of you know, you bet one of your friends, or you bet a family member. Oh, I bet you that this is going to happen, or I'll bet you that I'll make this shot, or I'll bet you that that, uh, that you know I'll make this, or whatever it is that you're that you're doing. Um, so that, that's not what we do over here. That's not what I do. So we, we invest and we invest into in, in good fighters here. So let's break down the, the bets here. Let's break down into it. Here we go. So we got Gustafson at minus 450 plus Barnett at minus 275. We put him in a two-leg parlay. That gives us minus 150. We put a unit in there, a unit to win 0.67 units. Then we take Gustafson inside the distance at minus 175 and Barnett. Uh, once again at minus 275 we combine those two in a two leg parlay that gives us plus 114 three units to win 3.42 then we keep moving along here keep moving along we take Gustafson and we put him in a two leg parlay with Scott that gives us minus 122 one unit to win 0.82 units then we take Gustafson inside the distance plus Scott that gives us plus two plus 134 it's a two legger two units to win 2.68 then we take Barnett and Scott, put them in a, a two-leg parlay uh, at plus 103, one unit to win 1.03. And then we have a couple of frisky ones here. Gustafson inside the distance, plus Barnett, plus Scott. That gives us plus 219. That's a three-legger. A uh, quarter unit, so 0.25 units to win 0.55. Gustafson inside the distance and Barnett inside the distance, plus Scott. That gives us plus 422. Uh, plus 426, a quarter unit to win 1.07. And then we got the uh, the prop bets here. Gustafson, by submission, half a unit to win 1.38. Barnett, inside the distance, at plus 125, 
half a unit to win 0.63, and uh, Gustafson by submission was uh, plus 275. Um, so then we move on to so Gustafson plus 275, half a unit to win 1.38. Barnett inside the distance plus 125, half a unit to win 0.63. Uh, then it's Scott inside the distance plus 155, uh, half a unit to win 0.78. And then we have Akhmedov inside the distance at plus 550. So I was a little surprised I was talking about Akhmedov inside the distance at plus 550, um, a tenth of a unit to win 0.55 units. So uh, then, of course, this is all in the video, but we also send over the, um, the text file. So the file that I create that I work on, it shows all the picks, uh, the bet breakdown, and then also um, my doc sends over the uh, my my uh, quick view, so you can see all my picks real quickly if you just want to glance at them throughout the night. And um, so the total total risk is 10.10 units, 10 10 units, 10.10 units to win 13.58 units. So that wraps it all up man i cannot wait for tomorrow's fights i am very very excited for these and uh, like i said the mma dogs investments uh, check out our website mmadawgs.com uh, you can see our our, uh, our track record there the last event we profited uh 3.5 and change the event before that 4.5 and change so uh moving on up moving on up and um and i and i it is, is my intention it is my my work here my my devotion my time to continue to improve to continue to get better to continue to bring more profit um i really want um 13 and a half units tomorrow i really want that and uh that's what i worked real hard for this week for for this particular card and then after that moving on over to uh 170 and keep keep uh keep grinding away keep making it happen and enjoying your life and enjoying mine i hope you guys have the best and uh i'll talk to you guys real soon nobody likes to lose so be done letting that money burn its way through your pockets slow down get ready we are so confident that you will profit from our picks that if you don't, we will refund your money and give you the next card on us. In order to profit in the long run, it's important to be consistent with our picks. Rome wasn't built in a day and neither was Vegas. MMADogs.com. Profit guaranteed. M-M-A.